Hello, I'm Jake. Hi, I'm Carrie. And this is Love You Like Crazy, the podcast where we talk and rant about young adult books. So, Carrie, what are we talking about today? Not a book. We're not talking about a book. We're talking about a TV show based on a book. A series, His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman, uh, was made into a television show on HBO. The first, probably, season will maybe be the first book. I don't know. I don't know what their plan is. I think you're, I think you're right about that. But the first episode aired, and it was, and it was pretty great. Sort of. <laughs> I have feelings. It was pretty great that it happened. <laughs> right. So, so far, only one episode has been released. They'll release one episode a week. Uh, and so we thought we'd talk about it because we both watched it. We sure did. Um, so I watched it. What was it? Monday night? Is it on on Mondays? Yeah. Watched it Monday night and um, was really, really excited to watch it. Was really stoked about the opening credits. And then... <laughs> <laughs> then the episode started, Jacob. Yeah. So at what point in this process did you send me the email saying that we had to talk about it? I actually waited until I, I, I thought about it for a while. Yeah. I think it, that that email may have been in my drafts. <laughs> and if I if it wasn't a three hour time difference when I was watching it to when you may be awake, mm. I would have texted you immediately and gone, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? Pretty much at scene one. So I watched it like first thing in the morning. I got up, I watched episode one, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to work. And uh, so I felt like maybe I'm a little cranky for to be watching this first thing in the morning. Um, because the first thing, well, the first thing you see is an info dump, like text on screen. Yep. This story starts in another world. There are demons. There's a prophecy. There's many worlds. The girl that the prophecy is about. Oh, here she is as a baby. Yeah. She was brought to Oxford during the Great Flood. The Great Flood, which I don't remember being talked about in the book. It was not in the book. And that's I was really angry because all I could think was way to hit this over people's heads there, Pullman. <laughs> yes. But what bothered me actually was the helicopter. Is there a helicopter in the books? Um, there are different kinds of um aerial thingies. Okay. There's uh the there's other sorts of what are they um like zeppelins and shit like that. So why not? Well, I don't know. It just seemed like because then yeah, I mean because because she goes or she will go onto an airship with Mrs. Coulter. Yeah, airships seem to be the main mode of transport. Thirteen years in the future after. The helicopter. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I was like, oh, is it in the present day? Not that the books aren't sort of, in the, I don't know. They're sort of present because, I mean, it's sort of like, because when she comes into other places, it's more like the 80s. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So obviously uh, we both had some kind of negative things right off the bat, but, but um, there are also things we liked, I feel like. Like what? The casting? The casting is really good. So I was really, really happy. Um, I think I think Lyra is well cast. I think Mrs. Coulter is is well cast. Um, I think in the movie it was Nicole Kidman. And this one just seems like a little more sinister than Nicole Kidman did. No, she's good. I, I agree. Uh, um, James McAvoy is um, Lord Asriel. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was... I thought he did a good job with the role. Like, he's given some dialogue that I don't really approve of. Like what? Well, like, there's one point where um, Lyra, like, barges onto his airship and wants to be taken to the North Pole with him. And he kicks her off, basically. And Roger, Lyra's best and only friend, yells at him. She's better than he thinks she is! And James McAvoy shouts back. Everyone's special! Yeah. That just, like, that dialogue is very on the nose. And also, I feel like not what Lord Asriel, I don't feel like the Lord Asriel of the books would think that or say it. I don't think the Lord Asriel of the books would have even acknowledged Roger. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's a good point as well. What could this kid do for him? Right. Um, although, well, in the books, there's an answer to that question, but... Well, there is. But we're not there yet. We're not. So we meet, um, 
We meet Lyra. We meet Lord Azrael. We meet Mrs. Coulter. We meet all of their demons. Yes. And the, the TV show, people pronounce it demons. So I guess it's demons. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. It's demons. There was... Uh, mm. So, like, we, we were talking about that opening, the Great Flood, where Lord Azrael uh-huh. goes through this giant pool of water to uh, knock on the door, and the headmaster comes out, and, you know, it's, like, up to both of their chests, uh, and he says, oh, this is actually a line that I liked. Jordan College is a place of learning. It's not suitable for a child. Which I, uh, you know... I appreciate as a certain type of educators understanding of what <laughs> places of learning are for. They're only for people who've already learned everything. Yeah. You don't want kids there. No. God only knows what would happen. They might learn something. We don't want that. That's not allowed. But um, also in this opening scene and, and at several points, like the, the soundtrack totally got up my nose uh, just because it was always present and it was never subtle, I felt like, or seldom subtle. And I didn't notice it at all. Um, so maybe that's just the musician in you. Could be the musician. Could be watching it early in the morning. Uh, like at the very end, it was one place that I, I remember it is like Mrs. Coulter and Lyra are about to head to London on the air, on their airship. And they look down and they see the Egyptians are also leaving for London. The Egyptians, they're leaving too. And the music swells as if something really dramatic and awesome is happening. And then I guess then we see Roger has been captured. And then the episode ends. Yes. And I'm like, you know, uh, there's some... There's drama there, but oh, yeah. I don't know if it needed that kind of no. build up. Like, just sort of let it speak for itself. That was my thought. Yeah. So I, I watched the episode with my gentleman caller. Yes. Who has not? He has not read any of the books. He had no idea what was going to happen going into this. And at the very end of the episode, his thing was, "Oh, they're going to war." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, that was blatantly obvious, now, wasn't it?" <laughs> 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 yep. They're not subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they needed some uh, Les Mis in there or something. <laughs> <laughs> Make it even more majestic. So you think there should be a musical episode at some point? Uh, yeah. That's not even a question. Yeah, that's clear. Some kids with severed souls. Well, there is like a little musical thing when we meet the Egyptians. That's true. And I I do believe I started grumbling at that point. Why? Um, It was a, huh. This is stupid. Huh. <laughs> They're trying to be ethnic. Rejoice for your path is decided. You and demon back to the flame of the they're trying to be ethnic in like a very kind of broad way way of yep. being ethnic, I feel like, where it's like Yeah. Here's what I didn't like about the Egyptians and that whole opening meet the Egyptians music sequence. It just felt very like beginning of the Lion King. Ah. Where like they're introducing all of these various exotic animals and there's a, a soundtrack in which the singers are actually singing something like, oh, look, it's a lion. They're a lion. And so I guess I felt it was very similar, where it's like, oh, look, these people are different. They are others. They are exotic with the music and the ritual. And I but I thought it was a really odd choice. Yeah, I mean, because it wants to convey that these are different from the other people, but we don't really know the other people that well. Yeah, so there's nothing to like... There's no contrast, really. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of tell-don't-show in this episode. Yeah, I agree with that. There was like a lot of a lot of world building, a lot of, you know, oh, look, there's a lion. Oh, yes, it's a lion. Um, <laughs> rather than sort of... <laughs> 
Yeah, that is pretty on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're welcome. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you're getting a lot of, oh, look, there's a lion. Oh, yes, it's a lion. Instead of how you're introduced to things in the book where it's sort of, you know, just like a matter of fact, you sort of pick it up along the way. You don't necessarily know a lot of the the stuff in the book until you've sort of gotten a little further on and it clicks. Or at this point, they're like, this is the alethiometer. One of only six that were ever made. It does stuff. You know, instead of in the book, it was kind of like, a, hey, here's a thing. We think it might work. It's probably broken. I don't know. Here, have it. Good luck. Uh, yeah. Um, although one thing I did like about the lithiometer is when uh, Lyra tries to make it work. I loved that. <laughs> she, that was a really cute thing. She's like talking into it like Scotty in Star Trek Four. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. <laughs> it's super great. Uh, I, I was thinking about um, like in the book, the point of view is very attached to Lyra. Yes. You're basically seeing things as Lyra sees them and learning things as she learns them. And things are important only in as, like to Lyra, but also to you as the reader. Things are only really important in as much as they connect to Lyra. Mm -hmm. And so that sort of gives the book a leg up in terms of like, once you care about Lyra, then you care about all this other stuff that the book has because it's all related to her. Yeah, I think we're supposed to feel that way in the in the TV show. But I don't yet. And the TV show, I feel like the TV show is maybe a little influenced by Game of Thrones. Oh, it's 100% influenced by Game of Thrones. In that, like, Game of Thrones is like, here are 20 different people, and all of them have interesting stories, and you should care about all of them. Which, up to a point, Game of Thrones kind of carried off uh, to many people. And then they die. You know, so I feel like they try to do that here, but it doesn't work as well. Uh, at least for me as someone who really only cares about Lyra because I've already read the books. Yeah, I I think there were a couple of times in the episode where I was like, yep, they got that idea from Game of Thrones. And one of them was when they, um, they were in the, the Hall of the Magisterium. Mm -hmm. And it was like this giant, grand, open, empty room with light spilling in. And I was like, well... That set is definitely <laughs> influenced by Game of Thrones. It's just like the enormity of it. Even though it's, you know, it's CGI. It just, I don't know. It just seemed very influenced by. And then my other thing was, well, at least they can reuse all the, the North sets. Oh, yes. All the winter is coming. It's coming back. Sure is. So Mrs. Coulter shows up uh, right after... Lord Azriel leaves, and we all know that she's a bad guy. We do. And she pretends to be on um, Lyra's level and gets, like, sort of silly with her at this dinner. Hello. I am not used to the grandeur of this at all. <laughs> You'll have to tell me which knife and fork to use. Oh. I don't want to make a fool of myself. We know what a goddamn bitch she is. So it's hard to watch, like, as, a, as someone who knows the whole story, like... I want to yell out like boo hiss and I can't. Mm -hmm. She's bad news. I don't trust that woman. Well, what did your gentleman caller think of her? He doesn't trust her. Yeah. I couldn't say anything about like who they are though. And I really wanted to, cause my, my question was like, you know, if, if, if he's her uncle and he takes care of her sort of, you know, where did she come from? <laughs> And he thinks that um, Lord Azrael murdered her parents. Yeah. And I think that's a solid guess if you don't know any better. Right. Like, he's very mysterious. In the books, he's very mysterious and, and also in the TV show, but a little less so. I think just because you actually, you know, see him. <laughs> Whereas in the books, you're like, what is this guy about? Well, he, I like, and this is sort of a weird thing to say, I like how in both the book and the um, the TV show... He almost breaks her arm. Yeah. That was great. Lyra? Lyra, what the hell are you doing? Let go of me and I'll tell you. I will break your arm first. The wine was poisoned. That was such a weird detail that I was like, oh, because it makes you think he he doesn't care. Like, 
He would break this little girl's arm. He gives like no fucks about anything. What a weird bad guy. Yeah. And so I like that that detail was kept in. Yeah, that might have been my favorite scene in in this episode was like when she comes in through the window and hits the wine out of his hand and he just reacts immediately in this kind of brutal way. Mm -hmm. And then it gets a little exposition-y, but like for for a little while there, like they're just reacting to each other very kind of rawly and and uh and I like that a lot. And then we uh we see Grauman's head. Uh-huh. And she asks him uh, if she can Can I see the man's head? No. Why would I let you do that? I know, I loved that. Cause I would totally have asked the same thing. Yeah. Like, can, can I see it? And the fact that he was actually repulsed by the idea that she would even ask that. I thought that was a really cute moment. Where I'm like, oh, maybe he's not a complete and total chode. He's probably a complete and total chode, but there's something semi-redeeming about him. Yeah. He's revolted by the idea of a little girl wanting to see a head. <laughs> yeah, I think he maybe hasn't spent that much time with children. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Um, Let's see. So, um... Were there other, actually, I'm going to look at our texting the other day. I believe I talked about um, the, the the animals talking. Oh, yeah. So that took me a little, like, because I hear these voices and I'm like, Who, who's talking? And then it was the animals. Well, I watch it on closed captioning. So it, it always tells you, like, who's talking. Oh, yeah. So this is something I understood in the TV show. And then I tried to remember if it was also true in the book, but I don't remember. In this episode, I don't think anyone's demon talks to any other human. Like, people only talk to their own demons, it seems like. I don't think anybody ever talks to somebody else's demon. Not really. Yeah. I guess the demons talk to each other in later books. They do. Um, they they communicate with each other. They they um, I know that they have talked to each other. But I don't think that you talk to somebody else's demon. I know you definitely don't touch them. Yes. And when the demon... Um, monkey touched pan like lyra hurt yes that's in the preview yes yeah that monkey is creepy that monkey's super creepy and it's much creepier than the, than the movie version i was like i i was excited to see him but i was also really freaked out by him yeah important question yeah is it taggle related yes does this tv show contain <laughs> taggle it does not. Oh, Jesus. This is a taggle-free show so far. That's true. There could be a demon named Taggle. There could. In fact, wouldn't you say that Taggle in the book is kind of like a demon? Well, that just makes me sad. It's talking. It only talks to Kate, mostly. Other people can touch him, but it's only, you know, yeah. if he lets him. That's true. So I'm just wondering, you know, is, is this in the same world as... as his dark materials. It could be. It could be now. There are multiple worlds in, yeah. What was your least favorite part of the whole show? Just like visually, there was like a lot of pretty stuff that was cool to look at, but yeah. there was also kind of a lot of stuff that was just thrown thrown in because it, like the, the flood at the beginning, it's like, why is that there? Because they needed to hit us over the head with the freaking allegory. They did. And also they were like, you know, it'd be cool if he w wades through chest high water and knocks on the door. And, um, and I'm just like, nah, man, Azrael would have let her drown. That's too much effort. Well, Azrael is. I just remember like. This will happen later on in the series, but when she shows up and he thinks. He thinks what he thinks and his total dismay and horror. Um, you know, he, Azrael, I feel like his problem is not that he doesn't care about Lyra, but it's that he just cares about other stuff a lot more <laughs> and has no, you know, just has no hesitation at selling her out if he needs to. Yeah. I am sorry, but I just don't have time for you right now. And also, he's just like an elitist jerk. That's another problem with him. He's such an elitist jerk. Uh, anyway, how about you? What did you? What was your least favorite thing? Um, some of my oh, some of my least favorite things. Um, I really didn't. Yeah, I didn't like the opening scene at all. I thought it was ridiculous, and I wanted to throw something at the television. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I liked her playing with her friend, uh, Roger, but when they were in in the catacombs, I really wanted them to switch the talismans. Yeah. In the, in the book, when you're buried, there's like a talisman of your demon that you're also buried with or not buried. I guess it's a, what, reliquary? Is that a word? Yes. So it's basically bones. Mm-hmm. And they put your demon symbol in your skull and... At one point, Roger and Lyra swap two of the things, and then they're haunted until they switch them back around. It's like a cool thing. I know. I I like. I don't know. I guess I wanted a little more magic, um, and a lot less hit me over the head with the allegory. Yeah, we know that the magisterium is is going to be a thing, but I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be so heavy handed. Like, yeah, it is what like the only very explicitly non um, or anti organized religion book that <laughs> that exists for kids for, for 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 younger kids. Right. Like, I need it to not get banned. <laughs> yeah. I also don't want it to get turned into some like Christian thing. Oh, right. What if they keep like using the symbolism and this imagery and like. If it goes too far. I demand that God be killed in the third season. If he's not, there will be hell to pay. XOXO, Harry. So you have heard from your gentleman caller that this series is supposed to get good after four episodes? Or at least by the fourth episode. So it's like three episodes of slog and then it starts getting good. It could be four episodes of slog, but I think it was like three episodes of slog and the fourth was good. And it, the season is eight episodes long and it's been renewed for a second season already. Oh, you know, I bet it's going to take a while to get through the first book. I want it to just be one season, but if it's only eight episodes, there's no way. Yeah. Well, I kind of wondered if that was why some of the exposition was like so laid in so heavily is because they just had to like got to get through. And so, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Yorick Bjornsson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to my armored bear. My very my very drunk, very armored, very bear. I love Yorick Bjornsson. He is mean and ornery and loyal and big, and I, I love him. I love him. Yeah. I, I think that that's like the the correct answer <laughs> yeah it's like like my gentleman caller very very tall hmm. and i guess i like that tall bears i, I don't really have a thing for you know york in, in general but you know yeah. well i'll say no to a bear okay um also edit it to make me sound less thirsty <laughs> <laughs> again can't be done <laughs> <laughs> um so my runner up is I am looking forward to Lee Scoresby. Oh, well, Lee Scoresby is going to be good because that's going to be Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yeah, which I'm interested. Uh, I am I am enjoying his work. Yes. Also, Serafina Pecola. Yeah, the witches in general, I think, will be interesting. There's going to be, a, I think, you know, if, if done right, this could be really good. And if this is done poorly, well, it was a good experiment. Yeah. It's really weird for, I mean... It's really weird for me to see the animals talk, dude. Yeah. I guess in my mind, it was more like telepathy, but to see their little mouths actually move, I'm like, ew. Ah, oh, that's gross. Like, don't be don't be doing that, Pan. Yeah. Telepathy would make more sense also in terms of like when Lyra and Pan are talking outside the window and no one hears them. And wouldn't that just be really loud? Like if everyone like was always talking to their demon and vice versa. It's just another fucking voice. No one wants to hear that. Uh, I don't know. It just makes a, a city street that much louder because everyone's talking to their demon. Yeah. Hmm. And if you've got your demon to talk to, why would you want to talk to anybody else? Oh, there's something I wanted to me- mention. Yes. So what did you think about the headmaster's portrayal you mean the guy from the wire oh yeah that's right daniels was out there too now you're gonna fuck him when he pulled you off a goddamn boat so yes i love him his performance is very very banner whatever we discuss this evening will remain private yeah. even from the magisterium 
Jordan College will not become a channel for gossip, rumors, and dangerous controversy. <laughs> And it took me a little while to warm to it, but I did, then I was just like, I just think that that's what that character is like. That is a choice to be like, this is a character who is mannered, you know? It's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. And he gave Lyra the uh, alethiometer, so good for him. And I still think it's pronounced alethiometer, but I'll have to go with this. That's what they called it. You know, I don't think you have to. I think you can pronounce things however you want. Yeah. Fuck it. It's a daemon. It's an alethiometer. So this was a little break from what we normally do, which is talk about books. And uh, the next book we're going to talk about, tell me about it, Carrie. Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. It's one of my favorite books. Um, I used to use part of it for an audition piece when I was in the theater. And I really like this book a lot. I, I really like a lot of um, Ray Bradbury's like YA style books. And this one's my, one of my favorites of them. When was the last time you read it? I mean, I'm sure you've read it, right? So I realized when I um, read it this time that I had gotten it confused in my mind with one or two other Ray Bradbury books. I, I just remember there was one book where like there are a bunch of kids and they have to save another kid by eating cake or something, which takes off a year off the end of their lives. Huh, I don't remember that one. Maybe it was, maybe I made it up. You probably didn't, because it sounds like a, a Ray Bradbury thing, like like Martian Chronicles era. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I definitely read it. Um, and I remembered all the stuff about the uh, the lightning rod and whatnot. It's a good book, and I'm really excited. Um, we're going to talk about it hopefully very soon. I'm getting a copy out of the library because I've been trying to read it on my Kindle and my version of the um, completely legit um, copy of the book that I have, it's a little borked. And so mm. trying to read it was difficult. So I had to get it out of the library. Gotcha. And let's see, I should say that we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash love way like crazy. Uh, and if you join the Patreon, I will write you a song and you can get episodes early and bonus material. Uh, I think one bonus thing will be this somewhat boring discussion of the errand I ran just before we started recording. So if that doesn't sell you on it, I don't know what will. And I'll also write you a song if you leave a review for us on iTunes. So should I play a song for one of our iTunes reviewers? Sure. That was a very cautious sounding yes. <laughs> so this time I'm singing a song for Bodette of Rockport 517. Actually, I think I know what that <laughs> username means. Um, because there's a podcast, a Dungeons and Dragons, or I should say role-playing game in general. They don't always play Dungeons and Dragons uh, podcast called The Adventure Zone. And in one of the adventures, one of the adventures is called uh, Murder on the Rockport Special, I think. <laughs> I hear that train a coming, it's never winter bound. And boat out of Rockport 517 has me to kick around. Cause I'm just stuck here in Rockport, in this old Rockport jail. Since the world's greatest detective made all my crime plans fail. If they freed me from this prison, if that rebel train was mine, I'd visit the pleasure chambers and drink that brandy wine. But I'm just stuck here in Rockport, wishing I could be free. Until then, Bodette of Rockport 517 said the lights left on for me. Way to go, Bodette of Rockport 947. You have a song. Congratulations. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So we watched a show. We'll watch another show. We'll read a book. I love you like crazy. Yeah. I don't know if we'll necessarily record something for every single episode of this. It, it sort of will depend on various factors. Various factors factors but we'll definitely at least mention it in future episodes and let you know what we thought yeah and i will definitely um probably live chat you or like tweet at you or something when i watch the next episode have you watched it what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck where's taggle yeah where's taggle give me a call when you get back hey there hey love i Tell me where I can find Roger. The airship is about to leave. If we're going, we have to go now. Tell me if the gobblers have Roger. Just use the keyboard. <laughs>